Hey guys, welcome to Green Free Homestead. I'm Derek. I'm Stephanie. Today, we're kind of gonna go over why do we homestead? Um, homesteading, as you guys probably know, or maybe you don't know, maybe you want to know, um, is kind of hard, um, but it is definitely fulfilling um, and rewarding in many, many ways. And this is kind of why we homestead and kind of what led to our homesteading. It wasn't an all at once decision for us. It was a gradual thing. Um, so if you're thinking about homesteading, you know, maybe watch this video um, and see if, if you kind of, you know, line up with some of the things we're going to talk about, or maybe you don't line up and you're like, I don't think that I can homestead. Um, so we just kind of wanted to talk about just the history of who we are and how we got into homesteading and maybe even, um, maybe what the future holds for our homestead or what we want uh, to do in our homestead. So uh, stick around with us and we're gonna go over some brief history and just talk about this homesteading thing. What is it? Why are we doing it? That sort of thing. All right guys, we do have a little surprise here at the end of this video. We are gonna be having a giveaway. So we'll, ha we'll tell you the rules at the end, but I'm gonna show you real quick what we're gonna be giving away. Um, this right here. We're going to be sending this to one of the one of the lucky winners. Whoever gets this, this is going to show up in the mail at your house. This exact one right here. It's never been opened. We actually got two of these. So it's a Mason um, batter bowl set and measuring cups. So that's the big one, and you can see it says Mason like right here. Um, but if you look, oh that one. But down inside, they're like nestled inside of each other. And then on each one, it tells like this one's a quarter cup, a half a cup, three quarters cup. This one's one cup. This one has uh, eight cups. I'm not sure if y'all can see that right there, but you can measure. It's a whole lot easier on measuring these things. These are really cool and uh, hopefully- They're really good as prep dishes if you're cooking. That way you can just go ahead and then you just pour it in there as you're, if you're baking or uh, making something. And then they all say Mason on them. Um, they're just super cute. They're cute enough to set out um, if you had room. Um, on your counter um, or they're nestled into each other so they're convenient in your cabinet too. Yeah that's our personal set so you can't have that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay so that we'll tell you all about that um, how to get um, entered in for that and uh, when we'll be getting that out to you guys. So a little bit of history me and Derek have been married uh, for t almost 22 years and we have three kids. We don't have a big homestead we're kind of on like tiny homestead right now yeah. we're on three we're quarters sort of, of an acre yeah we're we're a little less than an acre um and so we have you know our laying hens um we raise meat birds um, we have fruit trees fruit bushes and then we have two uh, pretty good sized gardens and then several like container gardens that we grow our potatoes sweet potatoes uh, garlic uh, things like that in. We have a dog named Solo. He's a... <laughs> You'll hear him run around. you hear his little tag jingling. Um, that's our dog Solo. He, he's just looking at us like we're crazy when yeah, we're doing he's, this. He's, he's always really <laughs> curious when we video anything. So we wanted to get back, go back and um, so as a kid growing up my family always grew stuff. Now it wasn't always like gardens but we were growing stuff uh, like my dad owns a landscape company my brother does a lot of stuff where he grows uh, a lot of unique, odd plants. And my mom has always just grown for, you know, her landscaping. And she has these big, beautiful yards and that she has flowers and stuff everywhere. So planting stuff and growing stuff was just automatically in my blood. It's just something that I did. And when me and Stephanie first got married, um, I tried, we ended up going somewhere and I got some fresh farmers like corn. I think it was like peaches and cream. And when I tasted that, I was like, yeah, I gotta have more of this. And immediately the first year we got married, maybe it was the second year, it was right around, the, right at the beginning, mm -hmm. I started to just grow some small stuff in my yard. And we had a tiny, yeah, tiny really yard, little. little postage stamp yard. I was just trying to mimic that corn, that sweet corn <laughs> was, it was, it would just blew my mind that, you know, you can go buy something at the store and then you could go, and it wouldn't taste nothing like what you would get at a farmer's market. It's just the quality of the, the taste and the, uh, the, of whatever that was. And I learned later that it wasn't just corn. It was, 
it was pretty much everything that you grow out in a garden. I mean, there's some things that are very, don't, don't matter that much, but a lot of things, when you grow it in a garden and you do it right, it tastes better. Yeah. Me growing up, I, my grandparents, both of them, were pretty avid gardeners, and my grandmother canned. Both of my grandmothers canned. So I was around that all the time. My grandfather, he gardened up until almost to about the year before he passed away. Um, you know, that's what he did. My grandfather's family, they were farmers. Um, back to hundreds of years, they were farmers. So Yeah, I've, even even when he didn't and wasn't hardly able to, to garden, he, he loved gar he he loved tomatoes. Mm -hmm. That was I mean he would eat uh, like five or six tomatoes every a day. day. Yeah. So it, yeah, I would I would try if he couldn't grow them then I would try and help him out and what you know so that he could get his uh, yeah. fill of tomatoes. So kind of you know, I was on the more of the gardening side. Um we weren't really into growing things like you guys were, just plants and stuff, but y'all yeah, y'all preserved that was what you all really liked mm -hmm. to do was preserve yeah, canning and and um even freezing things like that um was what I was familiar with. So when we first got married, no nobody our age gardened or canned. Um, so in the in the internet and YouTube, really, it wasn't like this big deal. You could find out all kinds of information about it. So yeah. I don't think even YouTube didn't exist then. And <laughs> the only way you could learn anything was through the the older generations who who did it and and books. And that's what we were using. But there was no you know the MI Gardener wasn't there to help us guide us <laughs> through you know how to deal with a you know powdery mildew you know we had to figure that stuff out on our own uh, we also started doing like strawberries and that really got Stephanie really liked that because I think I had a couple a few years where the strawberries really really overproduced at our, at our first we were home. making jam in that little bitty yard yeah. you know just from the strawberries it was wonderful you know I would call my grandma out all hours of the day and night while I was canning and she would walk me through stuff because sometimes reading a book is kind of just not enough you know the ball book I needed her information and her wisdom and she was always there to help us um, so I've been canning for I guess at least 20 years now yeah I've actually been canning in, in my own kitchen um, and I mean that's kind of our background on gardening and, and homesteading type things the next kind of little catalyst that pushed us into homesteading was out of necessity yeah um, I was sick a lot even as a kid and a teenager was always sick to my stomach. I had other health problems that became apparent in my really early 20s. Um, when I was pregnant, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. All right, guys, if you're wondering what happened just now, <laughs> the battery went dead on our camera and we had to recharge it and now it's dark outside and we had other stuff we had to do that we couldn't put off. So here we are, we're gonna get back to where we we're were gonna, at. We're gonna pick up where we left off. <laughs> So I was talking about some health problems that I had had really early on, um, early 20s. I was uh, diagnosed with hypothyroidism, and I was sick to my stomach a lot, and I mean like really, really sick. Um, probably similar symptoms to like IBS or something. So as I kind of went down this health journey from doctor to doctor in different places, I discovered that first I was diagnosed as gluten intolerant, and I was also very insulin resistant. Um, so diet kind of became an important, more important than it was previously. Like before we, we ate, you know, I, we, I cooked most meals, things like that, but we didn't we, know, I guess, uh, we were being educated on what is actually healthy and what isn't. You know, eating rolls with dinner is not a healthy thing to do for us. Pizza is not an okay thing. Even pasta is not okay um, when you're insulin resistant and you're gluten intolerant. We went down this path of, you know, we needed more vegetables in our diet, more meat in our diet. And so we started focusing on changing the meals that we ate. And so the garden sort of became like a leisurely thing, like a, something we really enjoyed doing to something that we needed just to do out of necessity um, just to help afford good quality produce um, because yeah it, it, produce became a major part of our diet because you know instead of having rolls on the side or uh you know any kind of bread or anything we would you know we would wrap stuff in lettuce but we started growing a lot of squash and zucchini squash and zucchini yeah we um, we uh, used the uh, we made like zucchini fries. We would we would make bake those. So zoodles. Yeah, we, 
we did a lot of substituting. You know, you, you take away the bread and you would substitute it for some kind of vegetable. And some of that stuff's really good and some of it's okay and some of it's not. And good. it was a hard journey. It was a, a lot of hard lessons of, oh, I'm okay, I can eat that. And then I soon find out that I can't, you know. Or sometimes you just want to be normal when you're out with everybody or you're at family functions or at holidays. And you think that you can eat these things and, and I couldn't. I just can't do it. I don't just get sick um, with my stomach. It really starts to affect my thyroid. My whole body is affected. Uh, it just isn't an immediate response the way that the stomach issues are. Um, after several years of just you know eating basically gluten-free, it became apparent that I was still sick from other things. Uh, and I actually switched doctors. Um, we, yeah. I went all pretty far away um, across a couple states to the doctor just to, because I'm like, I can't live this way, I need more help. And they did testing and, and put me on an even stricter diet. That's when I was put on an extremely stri strict keto diet. So um, from there, I get testing and, and, it, and I come to find out I am celiac. And I'm not just celiac, I'm celiac with grain as well. Uh, grain, different grains besides wheat and rye. And there's other grains that bother me. Corn bothers me. Uh, rices can bother me. Uh, just your basic grains can really bother me. They have to be um, organic, non-GMO. And even then, if I eat more than just a handful or if I eat it more than once a week, um, I still will have reactions to it. So I have to be, I just cut it out. I just don't yeah. even do it. Um, my body's trying to tell me something, so I'm trying to listen to it. So all of this has led to um, a way of life for us. That led me down a path of, you know, uh, I really like essential oils. Anything natural, I really kind of felt like that is what is good for our bodies. We've just kind of adopted that mindset, you know, that I'm, you know, I take a lot of supplements, um, even things like herbal teas. There's all kinds of things that you can do for your body that, you know, I just don't always feel that doctors may not know 100% what's best, but a lot of times we know and can, and can research and, and heal ourselves just as well and a lot of doctors will try and just blanket something with one type of prescription they'll just say hey this medicine helps everyone with this problem and we all know that that's not true and so it wasn't just the side effects that she was having it was also the medication side effects you know it wasn't just the the intolerance or it was there was other problems that came with all this medication so it, it became apparent to us it was just easier to eat healthier and cut out anything we could, even medications that were just processed and just labeled to cover anyone that had this kind of problem. Yeah, so anything processed. And that's where we really ramped up our canning uh, game. I went from canning leisurely, like jams and jellies and you know things like that, to anything that we buy at the store that we can, we look at it and say, can we make this? Can we can it? Can we do it ourselves? So um, actually this coming week, I have some more beans that I need to can because we buy chili beans. Um, and I have to be very careful what kind of chili beans I buy because some of them contain wheat and gluten. So instead of having to worry about it, instead of having to check labels, I would rather just make it homemade. Um, same with baked beans. I want to do some homemade baked beans. And that way I know where it comes from. I know the ingredients in it. And it, it's not, you know, this is a, a home processed thing. So all the ingredients, are what we put into it and we know where it comes from. So it is really just this whole health journey in general and along with our interests has really narrowed us down to the homesteading lifestyle. Yeah. Um, yeah we weren't, we we weren't were, gonna be able to avoid it. It was right. just like we were we were destined to go down this road. Yeah, because then we got, you know, chickens, um, because for eggs, and then now we're you know doing meat birds. We did meat birds last year. And now that we've had the meat from the meat birds, we don't like the meat from the store, and which is what we expected, which is you know why we did it. But now we're kind of spoiled. Yeah, yeah, um, we, we, we're, we're out of like chicken breast that, that we processed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and now it's kind of like, well, we, we don't want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so now that we're on to homesteading, that's the, our whole journey into homesteading. Um, you know, we have our big gardens, we have our, our egg flock. Um, we get our meat birds, um, we have our fruit trees, I'm canning as much as I can can, um, love making broth, beef broth, chicken and turkey broth, all those things. We love all of that. We like being able to, okay, we're going to go 
down to the pantry and see what we can get out of the pantry instead of saying, I have to go to the store. Right. And we live in, I know we say this a lot, but we live in a neighborhood and we do a lot of this, we do this out of our neighborhood, out of, you know, we're, we're on a small lot. I mean, it's not small. It's but, a rural area, but it's still a neighborhood. Right. And so if, if, don't think that you can't do some of the things that we're doing if mm -hmm. you live in a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You do have to be careful about your city limits and your HOAs. Always double check with that before you go and buy a bunch of chickens. And then they tell you you can't have them. And we don't have a rooster. We could have a rooster. We have neighbors across the street and behind us that have roosters. We just didn't get a rooster. We weren't sure. We didn't want to make our neighbors on either side upset. And so far, we're okay without a rooster. But yeah. as we progress and we see it progressing, we're in the chicken game now. Um, now we want roosters. Chicken so math is about to happen. Chicken math is happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, when you order chickens, if you order them online, it's like a minimum of fifteen dollars or fifteen chickens, or you're going to, have to pay more. So it's like, oh no, well now we have to get at least fifteen chickens and <laughs> more, <laughs> more, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, well now, like I make soap from the beef tallow. It's like everything that we can take out from having to buy, we are doing it. Whatever we can analyze and say, you know what, I can make that, I can do that. And that sounds like a lot of work, and some people are just like, I can't do that, I don't want to do that. And we enjoy it. Yeah, that's um, something you need to think about. I know homesteading has been real popular lately. A lot of people are, you know, everybody's freaking out about eggs right now. But it may not be for you, it may be easier for you just to go and buy eggs. So it's something, if you're thinking about doing homesteading, if you're wanting to go down this, you need to count, you know, make a plan and figure out what it's gonna cost. Because buying eggs is cheaper than having chickens yeah. it is monetarily and that doesn't include your time and your energy and if you go on a vacation you have to you know have someone that helps with them there's a lot to consider and yeah. you know, you want to make sure that they're taken you know good care of and you can get a little money back on like selling eggs mm -hmm. and it'll help pay for pay, the fee pay for the fee yeah but it, you're not you're not gonna get rich off of selling eggs unless you just do it on a crazy. <laughs> you give scale. a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so. So that's something kinda, to think about. Yeah. This is all kind of what got us where we are. Um, I think there's some people that think we're crazy. Some people think it's cool, and some people just are like, okay, well that's their thing. So and we realize it's not everybody's thing. Right. Yeah. You know, some people want to go out to eat every other night. You know, and that's just not us. Or some people are like. I'll just go to the grocery, it's easier. And I think that we like to garden together. Mm -hmm. It's something that we like to do together. And gardening, and you know if you have a garden, the bigger it is too, the harder it is. And it is a ton of work. We spend our summers gardening, is what I feel like. But it's rewarding, you know, if we didn't think we could have a garden, like there's some things coming up this year, we don't know how big of a garden we're gonna be able to do. Right. And, and that, that kind of doesn't, that doesn't settle well with me, does it you? Yeah. I, yeah, I still I'm, want to do a big, big garden, and we're going to have to probably scale it back a little bit this year. But it'll be worth it in the long run. And we have kind of like, we have more tomato sauce than we're going to use. Yeah. So we, I have we enough have salsa over... for two years. I have enough of most of the things. I may need to still do beans. I might need to do some tomatoes. <laughs> some tomatoes. <laughs> I think we have enough pickles to get through the you know next year. So I think we'll be good on almost everything, but maybe tomato sauce. I am, we, we use a ton of tomato sauce. Do you guys? Cause I'm like, yeah. I just, it's a base for a lot of the stuff that we eat, I guess. So we were in the middle of all this. So Stephanie's health issues were, and then, you know, COVID hit and mm -hmm. everybody's kind of stuck at home and mm -hmm. she really got into watching YouTube channels of people <laughs> on their homestead. Yeah. And before long, you know, I'm sitting there on the couch and getting ready for bed and, you know, I'm watching Binge watching, binge watching, you know, uh, <laughs> living traditions. Living traditions home show. That and, was my gateway yeah. YouTube channel. Yeah, all these great channels, you know, <laughs> Acre Homestead and uh, Eight, that and, 1870s. Home yeah, we got those, so we, we, yeah, those, 1870s. Yeah, we watched a yeah, lot of that. Yeah, uh, we binge watched that during COVID. And, and then we we were like, you know, we're doing a lot of this stuff already, yeah. and and it got us started. So we're like right at a year that we've been doing YouTube. Yeah. And it's it's been fun because we've been able to communicate with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We uh, we have a lot of fun on Facebook, uh, on the Facebook page, 
and um, we're just really enjoy uh, helping other people and, and kind of you know showing them the things that we're doing that might be different and, and educating people and that's that's really what, why we do the video and because we're small yeah uh, we want to you know we wanted to show people that you can do this it doesn't have you don't have to be on 10 acres yeah. or five acres or 25 acres you don't have to be we're doing it on three quarters of an acre um, and we kind of want to explain to you too because a lot of times we put recipes and stuff on YouTube and that's because we're grain free um, you know the kids and Derek occasionally if we eat out they may get something but like what we eat in the house what I cook with everything is grain free so that's why we're grain free homestead um, now we do still feed our chickens um, so far so good on the feed the feed does not affect me um, we we feed them um, like a roll king um, layer blend right now and I haven't had any issues I know there are people who are more severely allergic and they can't even feed their chickens or their livestock anything with grain and that I can't even imagine having to do that but if we did if we have to we would figure it out yeah um, it just looks like it comes in waves and you just you take what you can handle and you figure it out but that's why we're grain free homestead um, it's because I don't cook with flour I can't even really have it in the house and then as far as rice and corn, um, I don't eat it or generally cook with it. Some of our kids ha have some symptoms to gluten. So, you know, things things are can be genetics, though. You know, they're, they're having some of the symptoms that she had when she was younger. So and, we're really trying to, to just completely... And they've tested. And a lot of times antibodies don't show, just like with me. Um, I was, you know, in my 30s before they... How many, how many tests did you take? I don't even know. They did them with my regular blood draws and stuff that I would have, and that my antibodies would be zero. But I had such severe reactions to it that my, you know, finally at one point my doctor's like, "You have to be celiac," um, because of, uh, you know, the whole picture, because of everything going on, not just because yeah. of the stomach reaction, just everything going on. So it just for whatever reason, the blood test can show a false negative on a gluten test. I don't understand all of it. Um, some of it I do, but I just tell my kids just because one test comes up negative doesn't mean we're we're just going to assume that you're not. So we go by their symptoms, and I think that honestly that's how we should treat our bodies. Go by your symptoms. Yeah. So, so we got a lot of um, a big plans this year, and it's it's going to affect um, our channel, uh, and we got a lot of things that we ain't going to tell you just yet what's going to happen because. Some things are just still in the works. They're, they're just too early. Mm -hmm. But we have plans on growing more of everything and making everything bigger and doing everything you know, more crazy than ever before. And that's just, you know, I think you know, we had a video talking about things that we were wanting our plans for this year. And uh, so, you know, the future is bright. We, we got a lot of plans and we got crazy a lot. Crazy might be the word of the year for us. Yeah, this that is going to be, be our, our probably the <laughs> craziest. Just stay tuned on is, that. Yeah, some of the craziest stuff <laughs> that we've ever done. Yeah, for us. For like, us. Some people yeah. it's not, it's no big deal. But for us, it's, it's, it's a big, big deal. deal. Yeah, for us. All right, so we want to get to the, the giveaway. Um, I don't know if y'all saw them as good because I looked at that video before and you couldn't see everything real well. So just I'll try to show one. So these are the, uh, let's see if you can get close and, I don't know if you can Tilt see it. it down. There. There. You can kind of see where it says Mason there. And yeah. then this is the nesting bowls that go inside of it. Yeah. And they have the measurement marked on it. And they all say Mason as well. Here, show them the box. You can see it better on the box. I'm not sure. But there it's it is. It's a really nice set. Super cute. It's five pieces all together. So yeah, if you want to get in the drawing to win this, you need to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Mostly like, like, subscribe, and comment would be the most helpful on this video right here. Yeah. So today is Sunday, January 22nd. So that this is the video. Um, we're gonna go from today until February, what was it? February 12th. That's a Sunday too. Yeah. So that is like three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. So any video we have from between there, between now and then, come back to this video and comment on this video to get entered into the giveaway for this. And then uh, we'll be able to contact you so that we can get this to you guys. Yeah. And that's it.
That's it. Well, guys, um, don't forget to comment and like and subscribe uh, so you can get in on this because this is a really cool set. I like it. And, you know, I don't even cook that much. It's just a cool set. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for staying with us and listening to our story, um, why we do this, um, where we came from, that sort of thing. We haven't really shared that a whole lot, just in little tidbits here and there. So we thought about just putting it all together in one video so that you all can understand why we're grain free um, and how are we even a homestead, that kind of thing. So we just wanted to share that with you all. And um, we appreciate you all. We have been in contact with a lot of people, had so many um, amazing, nice, just comments and interactions and advice, you know, just all kinds of stuff um, that we, we didn't really know if it was gonna happen or not, and it did. And so you guys have been really awesome and we appreciate you. So thanks again for watching guys and we will see you on the next video. Don't forget, comment and you can get in on this. Have a good one.